classism, torture, homophobia, poverty, and the degradation is the degradations of earth are still largely undressed by the ordinary monotheistic believers. Such issues do not count in most salvation's theories. They list all this not to be negative. I list all not to be negative, but to let us see the very real limitations of the overwhelming and over-asserting of the individual self and its private salvation and the expansion of that false self into ideas such as my Christian community. The individual became individuated and in the West without any keen awareness of the common good or the harmonized of body, mind, heart and community. That highly individuated personality colonized the world and spread its conquering version of Christianity. Catholic means universal. Greek kata olon according to the whole. Yet in my experience most Roman and Anglican Catholics and most Orthodox are much more provincial and ethnic than truly universal. And most Protestants are still protesting too much rather than transforming themselves or their cultures. In both individualistic groups, there are never been much concern for social sin or institutional evil. Spirituality lost out and now so many of our people go elsewhere to find what they seek, support groups, conferences, books, or do-it-yourself plans. According to a recent national study, 44% of Americans today are somewhere else than in the church of their upbringing. The second biggest denominations after Roman Catholics is former Roman Catholics. Has this ever happened before in history? One wonders if a civilization can flourish when so many people of it are so alienated from their own tradition and religion. debate everyone can win here is a true story that might illustrate what others have to teach us perhaps it can invite us westerners out of our left brains and into our other hemisphere now he's going to tell a story about a friend of him, Thomas Williams, once brought back a stack of photos from a monastery he invited, he visited in Tibet. Older and younger monks were pictured in what was called in our translation the consequentialist debate. In every photo there was a young monk seated on the ground and an older one seemingly circling around him. In many of the pictures one or both of them was smiling or gesturing. He told me that during the young novice training he or she is presented over a period of three years with each and every one of the Buddha's teachings. During that time, she has to name all of the difficult and problematic consequences that will follow from observing this teaching. After each answer, 
the older monks clap their hands in approval, and they smile at one another. When all of the possible negative consequences are exhausted, they move on to the good consequences. The same procedure is followed until all of the good consequences have been unpacked, no matter how many hours or days it, task, it takes. And again, after each answer, the master claps their hands and they smile at one another. It appears to be patient and disciplined training in monopolarity thinking and in broad reflection and discrimination. There is no declaration of the perfect answer or the wrong answer. The novice is quite simply being taught how to weigh and discern, see and understand the good and bad consequences. And from that open field to learn himself and learn how to wisely advise others. What an utterly different structure compared to a Western debate style. With us, one must win and the other must lose. This is our style of religion too. Here is the, the clincher. The only way you can lose the consequentialist debate is to stop smiling. Obviously, this calls for a letting go of the ego. Have you ever noticed that any situation when your ego is invested, afraid or needy, it's very hard to smile? But when the truth is not your personal possession, it is very easy to smile. The concern in the Tibetan Buddhism is not to achieve a conceptually perfect answer, which then has to be defended, but to call for a happy, loving, aware and perceptive human being. Is that not one type of salvation? The impulse behind this worldview is reflected in the wider society. Tibet is one of the very few wisdom-based cultures left in the world, and despite enormous pressures, it has never been warlike or aggressive. Jesus probably feel at home there. Many of us... <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Many of us have heard Dr. Phil, the TV therapist, and we have him also on our Europe channels, tell couples in counseling that sooner or later every married person has to decide do I want to be right? Or do I want to be happy? He says he is saddened and surprised at how many prefer to be right and therefore are seldom happy. He then adds to their shock with his signature questions. And how is that working for you? At this point in human and Western history, We have to ask that same question. Christianity, how is this working for you? Remember, Jesus never said, This is my commandment, thou shalt be right. But that is the only way that both the ego and the dualistic mind know how to frame reality. It is not working.
Let me end with these words. It is an amazing arrogance that allows Christians Christians to so readily believe that their mental understanding of things is anywhere close to that of Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I think the intended effect of that often misused line is this. If Jesus is the truth, then you probably aren't. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, in this chapter we recognize a lot of things that is going on in different religions and yes indeed this is a lesson from the monks let our hearts and mind and eyes are focused on Christ may he show us every day more and more to become more Christ-like that we find each other in the love that Christ poured out in this world let me end with these words you don't have to think much but to love much May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May you listen very carefully to every word was spoken in this meditation, in this lesson of the monk. find peace within remember always that God is ever present and God loves you no matter where you are I love you guys have a wonderful day for those who are still working a good night when you come home a good rest May it all be well with all of you. Blessings to all. Pastor Yeti.